Welcome back, guys. Jacob Hess here with NextJet, and I'm here with Chandler Johnson from Cisco Systems on their tactical operations team. Chandler, why don't you go ahead and give us an explanation of what you guys do, some of the really cool stuff that you guys do. Okay, sure, sure. Um, we're a full-time dedicated team um, at, at Cisco that does disaster response communications. Um, so we go out to a disaster area after, after the disasters happen to bring up communications, usually for the first responders. Uh, we'll work with militaries, governments, really anybody that requests us. You don't have to be a Cisco. And the, the other great thing is uh, it's all free. So everything that we provide is free. We even do free consulting. So if people want to build trucks or kits or anything like that, um, we'll help them do that. Really, really cool. So can you kind of tell us what the truck's all about, this emergency communications truck you have? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so this is actually the NERV behind me. It's the Network Emergency Response Vehicle. The NERV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we have two of these, uh, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, is basically a network work on wheels. It's also got an office in the back. So anything and everything the decision makers will need to uh, to coordinate the response we've got on board. Uh, we do satellite communications as well as 4G and we can take any kind of fiber or uh, copper that's on scene. Awesome. It's very flexible. So to kind of explain this a little more deeply for those who may not have any idea that tactical networking is even a thing. Right. For example, like if a hurricane happens, like yep. Hurricane Katrina for example, we yep. were there, my co-founder and I, it takes out all the communications, right? right. So you go on site and you deploy communications where there is none. Exactly. Um, typically that's with satellite connections. Um, usually the 4G uh, towers are either knocked out or are, are unavailable. Um, and yeah, we can actually uh, be on scene and be up and running in 10 to 15 minutes uh, on our own Wi-Fi network um, and giving out Wi-Fi service to our surveys. Yeah. Awesome. We've got the NERV, which usually stays in the U.S., um, but we also have these portable kits that we uh, that we use internationally. So we'll pair. Usually, this kit is our is our main main kit uh, with our uh, satellite dish over here, and uh, we've got worldwide communications, both voice and data. Um, in a box, uh, so very convenient. Um, a lot easier to, to ship this than to ship the truck, of course. Um, and then this is our lighter weight kit. It's actually based on Meraki. So we're starting to use more and more Meraki um, as they're uh, coming into Cisco, right? Uh, so that's actually the MX64W that we're using. Um, we've actually upgraded mostly to the 65Ws now. That's the newest. Um, yeah, we're constantly updating. When new gear comes out, um, we'll battle test it and uh, put it out in the field. And, um, and yeah. So you've got a voice router here, right? Yes. And whenever you deploy into an area that all the comms is gone, I'm right. guessing you you can connect to satellite comms, right? Right. So you can set up a, a system of phones, and those phones will then have outbound access, right? Exactly. In the real world, all those yes. phones, just like a regular phone system would. Exactly. And actually, with this kit, uh, we're running uh, Call Manager Express. So yeah, it's, it's running CME for the local call control. So even if we're disconnected, we can still make calls between you know rooms or buildings, or we can set up you know kind of phone banks on the fly that way. Um, but all of our all of our kids home back to our uh, redundant uh, back end for PSTN connectivity. Oh, that is sweet. Yeah. So what, can you tell me what is kind of the biggest deployment you've been on and the most kind of phones and, and yeah. network devices you've deployed, wireless access? Sure. For me personally, um, the, the, probably the, the biggest deployment or the most interesting was the the earthquake in Ecuador. Mm. Um, went down, uh, was down there for about two weeks. We actually took, uh, built on site uh, a lot of these kits, put them in hospitals, um, that were, that were uh, either damaged or just didn't have connectivity. Um, so we got that for them. Um, that was very interesting. Didn't speak uh, any Spanish, but uh, we made it through. Uh, oh, you should have had Daveed with you. Yeah, uh, yeah, there we go, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, but probably the largest deployment that the team has ever made uh, has been really in 2017 uh, and even 2016, we've been working with the uh, Net Hope uh, to do Wi-Fi in the camps for refugees. So refugees coming from Syria, coming across Europe, uh, deploying very large networks all across the, uh, Greece and uh, Serbia, right? Um, and that's probably the most, and that's a lot of Meraki access points actually. Um, it makes it easy uh, to see you know, what's going on 
of the network, a lot of throttling of it too, which is nice. So how many how many access points generally do you guys deploy there? Hundreds or we we were getting into the hundreds uh, with this deployment. Now some were taken down and moved and that thing as the camps move. Right. Um, but uh, it, just to put it into perspective, uh, we usually have a two week deployment uh, schedule and uh, and that's one team. So we started at team A and by the end I think we were at team L uh, by the end. So we had a lot of teams deployed out, a lot of APs out there. Um, yeah. That's super sweet channel. Yeah. So by the way guys, this is a free service that Cisco offers to the world whenever there's disasters, they go out and deploy communications. Really awesome stuff. Thank you channel. Yeah, no problem. Feel free to check out our Facebook. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram actually uh, if you want to follow us. Uh, yeah, keep up with us. Awesome. Let's take a tour of the you want to go on the tour of the truck? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So I'm an engineer with the team. Uh, so this is my section, my, uh, my favorite section, right? Yeah. All the blinking lights, all the fun stuff. You feel at home right here. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so I know it's kind of kind of a lot to take in all at once, um, but just some key features here. Um, we've got the two 3900 series routers. We are hard planning uh, to upgrade them very soon to the 4Ks, okay. some of the newer routers. ISR G2 guys. Yep, yep, yep. Um, of course, we brand switches. We've got 3750s. I think these are actually on the docket to upgrade as well. Um, some of the newer things, uh, things we've been experimenting with, actually is uh, putting Meraki in front of our uh, Cisco gear to get that deep inspection of the traffic, and the throttling okay. is very nice. So you're yeah. putting the MX appliance in front of the ASA? Well, so, uh, yeah, maybe separate those out, but this is, uh, we've done some testing with it, and, uh, and and putting it in front just to, of our whole, you know, putting it in okay. series with it, yeah, yeah, actually right, in right. front. So the ASA um, is still an outsider? Actually, a yeah, and this ASA, uh, we're, we're still setting up, but um, the ASA, uh, we're getting the, you know, the next gen firewall tech out of that. Right, um, right. Yeah. Generally, we don't have the Meraki in all the time. Again, we're still experimenting with that, getting, getting uh, you know, learning the ins and outs. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, this is um, cool stuff. It really reminds me of my military days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, some of the other interesting stuff we've got here, of course, our SAT gear, right? Um, that's that's. You typically don't run into that in your normal uh, networking uh, job. No. Um, so I had to learn a lot on the job, but uh, it's, it stays interesting. So that's all of our satellite gear here. This uh, this Linux box actually does uh, some automation for us. So I wrote uh, some automation for the truck to make it simpler for automation people. guys. Yeah, yeah. It's Very key. useful. Python, do it. Um, but yeah, uh, just to make it easy for our volunteers and also people that are just non-technical to be able to manage the truck. So we can change up links, we can turn on and off our VMs and services that way, and it's just a point and click radio button type setup. Um, other cool stuff, we have video surveillance on board. So this is uh, Cisco VSOM. Um, and you can see uh, we've got cameras all around the truck. If you notice, there's not a lot of windows in the truck, so that's good for situational awareness. And then, uh, actually, this one's a PTZ, so we can, uh, on the mast. So if we need to go in and look at something specifically, we can we can do that. Um, it's actually a very good camera. Uh, so this truck is designed to like withstand hurricane force winds? Uh, not quite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're usually going in after the disaster has passed. Right, right. Uh, so in that, that acute phase right after. Um, hopefully we're not there. Actually, here is our max sustain winds at 30 miles an hour for the dish. So that's kind of where oh, yeah, we're limited there. Yeah, that's an important there. part, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, over the air TV, we've got direct TV, uh, news, weather, that kind of thing. Wherever we are, we can pull that in. Um, and we also have a full stack of radios here. Pretty much any frequency band we can talk on, even ham frequencies we've got on board. Um, I'm actually a ham, a ham general, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that all gets tied together with Cisco IPix over here, or uh, Instant Connect, I believe they're branding it now. But basically, when uh, when you're on scene, you might have two different agencies talking on two different frequencies, right? And instead of having them carry two radios, right, to be able to talk to everyone, what we do in IPix is bridge those two frequencies together so they can talk seamlessly. Hmm. Um, so it adds to the, you know, reduces the complexity of the coordination. Gotcha. Well, yeah. Oh, this is really great. So, so you have so many different networking technologies exactly. integrated into this truck that. Working on this truck, I'm sure you become very skilled. 
Yes, uh, we have to know a lot, uh, uh, or a little about a lot. You have to integrate um, with any system that's out there, right? To, to get exactly. connected to the local comps. Right, uh, and we're, yeah, we have to pretty much be ready for anything. We carry a lot of loose gear just in case, you know, sometimes you need a switch here, a router here. Um, but knowing that full stack of the routing, the switching, um, actually I'm, I'm kind of the telephone guy, guy for full us. Stack. Yeah, yeah, learn it all. Um, so I'm kind of the collab guy now. Um, so we just actually migrated everything over. I just redid our whole architecture, so that's pretty fresh in my mind. Uh, yeah. A good deal, Jim. Any advice you want to actually give to our students out there if they're looking to get into the field of networking or systems engineering? Sure. Um, definitely get certs. Uh, the CCNA route switch, of course, I got uh, as soon as I came on the team. Um, I actually didn't have any formal training uh, in networking uh, until, uh, until I came on the team, but definitely get that ahead of time. Um, it's nice. It looks great on resumes, all those. Uh, those certs and uh, set up a home lab if you can. That's probably the best advice I'd have. Um, and play with it. Really get into it. Uh, you know, when you make it fun, then it's not really a job anymore, right? Right, right. And that's the point. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Yeah, no yes. problem. So the back here is just the, the office, right? Um, so office on wheels. So this is kind of where your decision makers will sit. Oh, okay. um, so we've got order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Speaker phone, of course. We've got uh, TP unit. Um, actually, we're set to upgrade those. Well. Telepresence. Yep. 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 Telepresence. Yep. Sorry, I get called up in the acronyms. Um, first aid defibrillator. Hopefully, we don't have to use either of those, uh, but they're there just in case. Of course, uh, fax and uh, and printer services. And uh, yeah, t phones all over the truck, of course, too. Oh, here's your social feeds right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah, there it is. Perfect. Um, follow us, tweet at us, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. How many trucks do you guys have? So this is Cisco NERV 2. Yeah, this is I'm NERV assuming two. there's a NERV 1. But how right. many other NERVs are there? So actually, only two. Only two? Um, yeah, yeah. We're actually a very small team. Um, eight people, I think, right now. Uh, in the whole NERV group, including both in the, trucks? In the whole tactical operations team. So we're actually the split across the coast. And again, it reminds me of whenever I was in the Air Force. So in the military, guys, you'll be working on base communications where you'll do your normal network management, running a network operations center, but you can also deploy and do tactical things like this. Obviously, the Air Force itself doesn't have really a van like this or a truck like this. Maybe they do now, but generally what, we're what you're dealing with is all the similar technology, even the SATCOM, the iDirect. We use the exact same company same for the SATCOM. Yep, yeah, but we just had everything in transit cases. So you take the transit cases out of the plane, you stack them all up in a that you deem the network operations center right. and you're up and running with the similar scenario that you see here. Yeah, and actually uh, we're starting to work with militaries, actually the National Guard a lot because that's their state level mission, right, is disaster response. So uh, we do some exercises with them to learn their gear as well as show off our gear and, and show them how to use it and how to interface with us um, in those times of crisis. Um, good deal. A great service that Cisco provides. Thanks again, James. No problem. Yeah, all right. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.